MMAfighting.com, and I am joined by Peter Queeley, who takes on Miles Price in the co-main event of Bell Bellator 217. Peter, the whole island is talking about this fight. I mean, I've got phone calls every day about it since it's been announced. How does it feel? It feels like maybe fans are more involved with a fight of yours than ever before ahead of this one. For sure. Um, there's many reasons for that. It's it's in Dublin is the big one. I'm my fans. It's been hard for fans to get behind my fights in the past, even though many of them have made a big effort to get behind it. It's just hard to to get behind it when it's in Russia. It's hard to watch. It's all these different barriers. South Africa, if it's not Russia. Uh, Italy, Poland, all <laughs> you name it. Um, the latest stint was in Russia, but um, this one, it's so tangible to them. It's here, and to give credit to Miles and the storyline that's involved. It's very, fans get excited about a fight when it's very clear to them why the two fighters are fighting. There's no explanation needed here for why me and Miles are fighting. I think that's why fans are so excited for this. I can remember as soon as you were signed, um, it really looked likely that like a pit bull fight was on. Something big uh, was down the line. Miles does this interview and then suddenly do you say, I want that guy. Let's forget about this for a minute. I need that guy now. Uh, that, that's not how it happened. What, what actually happened, I was actually slated to fight another opponent, quite a high-profile opponent that wasn't Pitbull. Um, then Miles opened his mouth, credit to him, uh, they, they, and they, Bellator has changed that. I actually didn't even uh, pursue it, to be honest. I just thought I was fighting the other guy. I was happy to fight him. I wasn't that concerned with Miles. He, he, he campaigned for it. He got it. That's it. Is, is that when this kind of interview comes out, when you're in the trenches, you're in camp, he's talking about a guy you're sparring, he's talking about you, when, like, that felt like a, such a big team effort ahead of that fight. D d does it feel nearly extra personal when someone kind of says that when you are preparing for a completely different fight? Yeah, of course. I, me I mem The feeling with that was, I remember we all just sitting around when we, we saw that he was there and he was helping Khabib. I was like, what is that Muppet doing? That that's all I was thinking. I was like, what? Like, he's just attention seeking. That's what I thought. I was like, he just look, he's just so thirsty for attention. He's just going over there to get a bit of attention. Like, it was just so weird. I don't know what he was doing. And he, and he can say what he wants, but he made a big song and dance about that. If he wanted to just go train, he would have shut his mouth and just trained. But he didn't. He fucking, he's put up more pictures in that month than he, I'd say he's put up in his life. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, like, people know what he did. It was wrong what he did. He knows it was wrong. He can say what he wants now, but it's too late now. He's going to get booed out of the building on Saturday night. It's not going to be a split crowd like one of the interview guys there was trying to tell me, oh, it's going to be a split crowd. It is not. It's going to be my crowd. They're going to boo him, cheer me. So he, he's, he better be ready for that. I've experienced that in Russia. It's not nice having 10,000 people boo you when you walk out. So he's going to get that. I was speaking to Moyles earlier and he was saying oh, he fully anticipates the crowd to be completely booing him on the way in here. But it feels personal. Like I mean, when I'm looking at, at, at your post on social media, you know, I'm going to cut the tail off the rat, of course. That's what everyone started calling Moyles as soon as this uh, emerged. There were the rat emojis in his, in his, uh, underneath his posts on social media. And, um, you know, you, you feel like he's betrayed Ireland. Like, I mean, do you feel that strongly about this? Do you really feel like he's a traitor to Ireland for this? Of course. Listen, PT, the whole country feels like this. You ask, ask Miles truthfully, what are his DMs telling him? I guarantee you, it's that he's a rat. So I don't need to, it doesn't need to be just my opinion, it's the country's opinion. Because I can tell you right now, that's what my DMs say, 99 plus. Miles a rat, Miles a rat, Miles a rat, Miles a rat. The whole country thinks about him. So the mob has spoken. It's not just me saying this opinion about him. Ireland has decided what he is. And that's it. Uh, congratulations on the opening of SBG and Ace. It looks absolutely fantastic. Congratulations on that. I saw connor has been down there an awful lot training. Um, I mean, do you, does that does it feel like you're kind of going to war again here? Like, I mean, do, does this mean something to Connor as far as you guys train together and you was talking about this? Do you believe Connor has, like, you know, he's really, really getting up for this one as much as you are, basically? Yeah, of course, but it's, that's just not because it's Miles. That that could be I could be fighting you, and he would be up for it. Please no. Yes, okay, you're okay. But I, I, I could be fighting whoever. Connor will be the same way when Connor. Could be, it doesn't matter who he's fighting. I am, I am so emotionally invested in my teammates' fights that there's not room for more, more emotional investment just because he's fighting someone I don't like. So to answer your question, yes, but he, he would be anyway. When I think about this and the fact that it's so personal, I'm thinking like, you know, you're a fantastic wrestler. We've seen you uh, completely neutralize guys that you're wrestling before. But is this the kind of fight where you want to put your knuckles on this guy? Yes. Yes. I'm, I don't plan to wrestle. I plan to take the center of the ring and just have a fight. That's what I plan for, for this weekend. Um, 
I don't know what his plan is, but that's that's my plan. I've heard people say, like, you know, um, Moyle's only way to victory here is in the striking rounds. Like, if Peter wants to win this fight, he could put him up against the fence, take him down, uh, and win it easily. Like, do you feel like you, you don't even care about game plans, anything like that? You just you need to settle a score here. Yeah, that is true. I feel like I could just go out and ragdoll him for 15 minutes if I wanted to. But it's I, I do want to... Listen, Pizza, I want to give the fans a big fight as well. That's part of this as well. I want I want that 10,000 people to walk out of there, whether it's a big KO or it's a... If Miles can deliver a fight to me, great. And we can have a fight, but I'm going to win. Make no mistake about that. I, whatever he brings, I'll bring more. But I, I like to fight in a way that people find exciting. That's why I strike mainly in my fights. My wrestling is very strong. Everyone knows this. I have dug deep and wrestled sometimes and, and got that done. But no, to answer your question, I'm coming for a fight. So I think he's going to wrestle personally that's what I think like I mean what do you think of his striking because it seems to be the part of his game that people highlight the most his boxing ability yeah it is he's, I, listen I've never discredited him as a fighter he's a good fighter um, if you, but if you look at his, his striking is good but if you look at his last fights he's wrestled you say what you want but he's, his wrestling has won him his last fights he wrestled against Phil Rayburn that's what one of him Phil was actually beating him in the first round striking in my opinion he wrestled there um, he wrestled against, uh, he tried to wrestle against, what's his name? Kane Musa, was it? Kane Musa. Kane was a bit better than him in the wrestling there, but he, he wrestles too. He likes wrestling, so, you know, maybe he thinks he can wrestle me. I don't know what he thinks. I don't, I don't care what he thinks. I'm going to do what I'm doing. Listen, I haven't been taken down in 16 professional fights. Go back and look through my fights and show me a takedown. So if he thinks he can take me down, good luck to him. He won't take me down. You're coming off that monstrous KO in Russia. Like it was, it was, it was. Like, do you feel like coming off that? Like, you have momentum. Like, this is what you're after now. You've shown your stopping power, and this is just going to be a staple of the Queely game from now on. Yeah, I do feel that. I feel like um, in the last camp before this one, my sparring, I started sparring a little differently. I started sparring harder with people. I was like, oh, fuck all you guys. I need to. I can't be nice to you cunts anymore. I need to. I need to feel this now. And that's why I think that's why I crack Kachatrian with that shot. I was used to hurting people. And I've carried that right into this camp, even more so. I've been a, I've been a nightmare, to be honest, in sparring. I'm, I'm very thankful for my sparring partners. I've, been, I've sparred hard this camp. And I think that's the reason why I got that big knockout in the last one, was because I, I, I felt it, I was used to it, and I've carried that through to this fight, and I think I can do it again. We were talking earlier about the fact that the crowd are going to be, you know, partisan for you. Like, a lot of people are going to be there for you. And when I think about that last fight in Russia, it turned into an absolute, you know, it looked like, uh, you know, the place could have exploded after you got that win. I think you had to be, I, I believe I heard that police escort back to the hotel, to the airport. Military escort back to the hotel. Changed hotel afterwards for, for safety reasons. Listen, that fight afterwards, there was bottles coming into the ring, coins coming into the ring. Fucking crazy. Khabib's fodder came into the ring to try and settle the thing. It was getting so wild in there. He came in on the mic and he was like, I don't know what he was saying in Russian, but he was trying to settle the thing down. And then a, bo a bottle came in and hit, hit him on, I think he was talking about this on the broadcast, hit him on the head, full bottle of water. And that actually settled it down, because whoever threw that, I don't think he meant to hit him. <laughs> and I was like, oh, you could feel the, oh. The actual arena settled, because he's obviously a very respected man, I guess, over there. And I'm sure that guy who threw that bottle is probably pair of concrete boots on him now somewhere at the bottom of an ocean but that actually settled it a bit but it was still serious the, the military had to come in military guard out military guard back to the hotel military waited for us change hotel and then then went home the next day so it's going to be nice to have a nice crowd behind you it's nice yeah, yeah kind of different yeah no but i mean it'll be nice this time to have the crowd behind you such a yeah, super yeah, such yeah of course of course i've never experienced this really I've never experienced this. Even to be in my own bed last night, to be in my own bed tonight, like I'm not staying at this hotel, I'm just staying in my own house. Um, that's just so nice for me because you never sleep properly in hotel beds. I don't anyway. It's just different. You have the comfort of your own home, your own city, your own friends, your own family all around you. So it's, um, yeah, it's amazing. I just, it's a different, it certainly is a different um, feeling for me to lead up to this one. Is this the biggest fight of your life when you consider Sky Sports, when you consider this big rivalry, when you consider the co-main event at the Tree Arena? Do, do you look at this like, I know you've taken on some great opponents over the years, but would you look at this one like your biggest? Yeah, it has to be. I've had, the, the fight I had in Kazakhstan before my last fight was huge. If you were there, you would have felt the, the, the size of that fight. It was a 15,000-seater stadium sold out. 
Um, it was on Kaz the Kazakhstan, like it was on the RTE one of Kazakhstan, and and the feeling of that fight was just immense. It was like crazy, but but this is bigger because it's it's at home and it's it feels more tangible to everyone here. It's closer to me, and the Sky Sports deal, of course makes it bigger as well so yeah it, it is it is the biggest one but that, I will tip my hat to that Kazakhstan one that was a big big fight um, but this one is bigger are you putting pressure on yourself to get a finish here coming off the back of that KO in your last fight no I'm just going to go in and go at him just going to try and break him up if he, if, he, if he quits or if the ref pulls me off him great if he lasts 15 minutes I'll just keep I'll just keep smashing him until, until that bell goes that's it I'm not under any pressure to get a finish I'm under pressure to win and I will win thank you so much Peter hey brother thank you so much fist bump <laughs> <laughs>